Hello, I'm Lucy Poles, Professor of Art at UC Davis. It's going to be a challenge to do these slides because I thought they were just going to be running on slideshow. Um, and they actually don't really have to do anything with the narrative of my talk. So I'll just start. Okay. Um, so I'll just try to do that. Um, uh, first, I'd like to thank Rachel Lackowitz, Abdul Mazid, Andrea Breiling, Walter Meyer, and Chris Christian for all their efforts to organize this symposium and the exhibition. Also, CGU and Shirley and Terry. Um, I really welcome this opportunity to share ideas about sculpture education with my colleagues here in California. The title of my talk is Honing, Project, Critique, Resubmit. I will address the value of students rethinking and reworking their projects after group critique. One of the highlights of teaching a studio class is the group critique. This is a time students formally respond and react to finished projects. For the person whose work is being critiqued, it's an opportunity to become acclimated to receiving widely and wildly disparate comments about their work. This is a very fertile and anxious time. As we've come to know, what is revealed in a particular critique has relevance for many. Thus, depending on what an instructor's particular interest in is in what their particular interest is in the takeaway, how one structures critique is critical. I will talk about my preferred way of conducting critique and managing its aftermath. I've divided my topic into the following segments, project, critique, and resubmittal. Within these segments, I have further subsectioned my thoughts. So number one, project. Project criteria. Before starting critique, the assigned project criteria is reviewed. Students are reminded to reference project goals in their con comments. In the beginning and intermediate levels, projects are designed to have conceptual, technical, and material challenges, which everyone is encouraged to keep in the forefront when giving feedback. Advanced students have projects with less structure. Instead, a topic or project phrase holds the class together and helps keep the comments appropriately focused. Number two, critique. Note taking. Everybody is encouraged to take notes during all critiques. By doing this, students develop a critique discipline. Many will make a quick sketch of what's being considered and write comments, their own and others, in a studio book. They, wit they witness me doing the same. Over time, they will have a substantial resource to reference, and I do see them refer to these notes over time. Real name or artist. Students refer to the person whose work is, being, is under review as the artist, or better yet, by their name. At UC Davis, students are slow to learn one another's name, probably because 10-week quarters are so short. They don't spend that much time together. Students get the honorary title of the artist when his or her work is under review. Most often when someone is referred to as the artist, someone else will shout out that person's actual name. We, get, we end up getting a lot of name reinforcement during critique. This helps the class become closer to one another and facilitates everyone working more as a group during critique and during studio hours. If students know the names of their colleagues, they are more likely to initiate informal conversations and later to ask for help or advice during studio hours. I'm just going to do a little bit more. I ask whomever's work is, being, is under review to absolutely refrain from speaking until all comments have been made, no matter how unfair or untrue that they feel a comment is. In general, students are eager to talk about their own work. They have a lot to say about the project they have just finished, and they want to be the first one to talk about it. I think unconsciously they may 
maybe to protect their artwork and maybe to protect themselves, or maybe it's just plain enthusiasm. They have a great urge to explain what each aspect means, why they made certain decisions, what things they tried but didn't work, and how many hours they spent on the piece, and on and on. If allowed to talk during critique, some students overwhelm the class with information. A few will have a response for every comment their colleagues make. Eventually, the class will th collectively throw in the towel and only say things they think the artist wants them to say or will not be, uh, or will not be challenged. In the meantime, I purposely aim for a type of overcompensation by asking students to say whatever they think is relevant and not to censor comments due to preconceived notions of time, funding, expertise, space, etc. Sometimes hearing something wildly fantastic associated with one's work can be informative. If not for immediate implementation, then maybe for some time in the future. Focus and respect. Just do a few more. No eating sit down, complete sit down meals during critique. Food must, uh, intake must be discreet, if at all. Critique is not a party, it's not a celebration, therefore no big spread of snacks, as it is a major distraction. For me, critique is the most important teaching tool of my courses. I discourage crosstalk, side conversations, or challenges to previous comments. It's bad form to comment directly on someone's feedback unless it's to expand or explore it in a positive way and productive way. Also, simple comments like, I like it, or it's awesome, are fine as long as the speaker then attempts to articulate why. Why awesome? Students can ask questions such as, I wonder why the artist painted it blue, but since the artist cannot speak at this time, that student must attempt to answer their own question. Others in the class can then attempt to answer the question. If there is a quiet student I call on who has no opinion, that student is encouraged to try to articulate why they have no opinion. Usually it is just a screen for not saying something solidly positive. It's a politeness that isn't necessary at this time. And, is, and it is something else, self-protection. So, it is something else. It is self-protection. So a lot of these slides, I think you can tell, they're before and then there's an after. Um, all students feel vulnerable during critique, not just the person under review. Students fear speaking in public, fear being looked at, fear causing offense, fear hurting someone's feelings, fear having their feelings hurt, fear being perceived as mean, or fear being seen as disliking the student under review. If students can trust that all comments ranging from positive to negative are a gift to the class, and especially to the person whose work is being considered, then the conversation is more lively, suggestions are more inventive, and the result is a takeaway that will be truly useful to the students going forward. After all students have commented, the TA and I will add what has been left out of the discussion. Then and only then, the student whose work has been reviewed may speak or not. Most students like to talk about the comments they found most relevant and helpful. Others are little lawyers with rebuttals to comments made earlier, and some needing time to reflect, thank the class, and leave it at that. Resubmittal, honing the real value of group critique. All students are encouraged to rethink and rework projects after critique. Any student in the class can resubmit a project at any time in the quarter. There's no point in conducting a rigorous critique if students cannot take advantage of what occurs during that time. Students are urged to scrutinize all comments choose the ones they find most relevant, and apply them to their project. If this step weren't included, critique would not be as instructive. Students need to utilize what they have learned at critique to their project. Visualizing an improved project isn't enough. 
As you would suspect, there is a range of efforts in resubmittals, from major touches to, from small touches to major throw it out and start all over situations. Instrumental in, in the lesson of resubmittal is for students to come to understand that it is in the honing, the fine tuning of elements that can make a piece rise from good to very good to great to outstanding. They cannot do this in a vacuum. The feedback they receive from their colleagues is key. How they sift through this feedback, what they choose to use, and what they choose to ignore is crucial to each student developing his or her own sensibility. Thank you.